Okay, so if you remember previously on engineer boy, we have determined the support reactions of a single overhanging beam. This time we got a double overhanging beam. Okay, so in this video, we will be determining reaction one and reaction two. Okay, let's say this is point A, this is B, this one C, this one D, and there we got E. So let's just determine R1 and R2. And for this, let me just suppose some equilibrium equations. I'll say the sum of moment, or you can say the clockwise moment that is going to be equal to the anti-clockwise moment. So we suppose these equilibrium equations in order to determine R1 and R2 because this is just a determinant structure and we can analyze this with equilibrium equations. Equilibrium equations are actually the sum of, uh, you can say forces in vertical direction must be zero, the summation of forces in horizontal direction must be zero, and the summation of moment at one point, okay, there can be any point along the span must be zero. So this time, I'm going to say the anti-clockwise moment equals the clockwise moment, okay, to determine R1 and R2. Now, as you can see, we got UDL, which is 200 kg per meter. So actually, uh, to make it easy, we gonna convert that into a point load, okay? That's why I have drawn this line. This is, let's say, a beam. And here we got R1. Okay, that is reaction one, and there we got R2, which is reaction two. Okay, and as you can see, at the middle we got 1000 kg, at the left hand side we got 600 kg. Now let's just convert this UDL. As you can see, on 2 meter span, there we're gonna take a point load over here, okay. And that is 200 kg, but that is per meter. So we're gonna multiply that with 2 in order to get a point load. So 2 2 are that is 4. So I can say 400 kg is here. That is actually 3 meter. This one is 2 meter. And here we got that is 2 meter. So we are gonna uh, just divide that into two spans 1 meter and 1 meter. And we're gonna do that the same thing with this okay this overhanging portion so that is actually a point load at midpoint and there we have actually 400 kg which is actually 200 times this two okay so we have just converted that into point load here we have one meter and there we have one meter so simple nothing complicated here okay all right now let's just determine the support reactions and for this approach as you can see, we got clockwise moment and any clockwise moment. Now, in order to determine R1, okay, I'm going to take moment, this moment, it you can say R2 or maybe at point D. Okay, so I'm going to take moment at point D or R2. Okay, so in order to take moment at point uh, D or reaction 2, as you can see, this force is just downward. Okay, that is making the rotation like that toward R2. So that is actually any clock. You can see that is anti clock. Now, this reaction, which is upward, and that is just toward R2, so that's just clockwise. You can see that. Now, this force, this is any clock. This one, that is anti clock. And here, 400 kg, that is actually clock because that is downward and toward this R2. So this time you got two cl uh, clockwise and actually when this is clock, when this is, and these three are any clock, okay? So let's just um, do some mathematics with this, okay? Now let's do it. As you can see, I'm going to determine R1 and that is actually clockwise, okay? So R1 times the distance toward R2 and that is actually three meter, one meter and one meter, that is five. Okay, this is clockwise. Now another clockwise. Let's this one that is actually clockwise and that is 400 times the distance, which is one meter toward R2. Okay, now this is clockwise. At the left hand side, I'm going to mention any clock. Okay, this one is anti clock. That is actually 600. If you see that times the distance, this is two. 3 that is 5, 6, and 7. So times 7 plus 
1000 that is anti clock times the distance that is 1 meter and 2 actually 1 1 that is just 2 meter 12 r 2 plus we have one remaining that is 400 times distance till r2 that is actually 1 why we are taking actually the distances because moment moment is actually the force times the distance the perpendicular distance till the point okay that's why we are taking the distance now let's just simplify it so we can determine r1 okay here we got 5r1 plus for ones are that is actually 400 uh, 6 say ones are that is uh, 4200 this is actually 2400 okay now add these three we can get actually 6600 and we can just okay let's just write that again so there is no confusion okay now just bring that to the another side of the equation we're going to subtract 400 so we get actually 5r1 now we don't need 5r1 we actually need r1 so let's divide both sides by 5 5 actually okay so these two cross each other now just do let subtract this one and divide it by 5 so we get actually r1 and that is if i'm not wrong 1240 kg okay so we have just determined r1 and that is 1240 kg so simple nothing complicated here okay now let's just determine r2 and that's gonna be so simple we are going to subtract r1 from the total load because r1 is already taken right it is already being supported and the remaining force is going to be supported by r2 let's just do it okay so before doing that let's just calculate the total load okay because we need total load it is total load actually and that is actually 600 plus this one plus you can also do that from this diagram because we have point load so it's gonna be so simple okay 400 and 400 okay so the total load I'm going to say TL just total load and that is going to be actually 2400 kg so simple now let's just determine and I'm going to make some rooms let's determine R2 okay this one R2 and that is going to be actually R2 the total load minus R1 because R1 is already been taken okay so R2 that is actually 2400 minus R1 which is already been determined and that is 1240 okay so simple so 2400 and 1240 that is R2 which is 1160 kg so that's none that is 1160 kg nothing complicated okay so the support reaction of a double overhanging beam are been calculated see you in the next video